Previously, Musashi is a boy who is destined to become a powerful bushi, who are warriors that fight evil creatures called Oni. Musashi is on a hunt for strongness of such creatures called Kishins. On his journey, he stumbles upon a mysterious weapon that grants him incredible power. As he grabs it, he immediately passes out while absorbing its power. When he wakes up, Mitsuru tells him that the rare people whose soul's aura is black are rejected by all Kitetsu blades. Since there is no way to change one's aura, Musashi is forced to give up on being a bushi. Suddenly, a blue Kishin appears and unleashes his Oni in the middle of the town. Musashi despairs because he can't use a Kitetsu blade to fight and almost gets killed, but Kojiro protects him. Other Oni attack the town and Kojiro uses his new sword's power to fight them with overwhelming power. Later, Kojiro and Tsubumi follow the other bushi to go fight the blue Kishin. Musashi stays in town. At that moment, that same mysterious man he met that morning appears again and reveals he has a black aura too. The man called Shiro tells him he needs to accept his black aura in order to use a Kitetsu sword. He demonstrates his strength by carving a huge chunk of earth out of the ground and making a deep pit. Bringing him the red and black sword Musashi chose earlier, he tells him he needs to become a Kitetsu blade to unleash his full power. When Musashi says he can't fight together with Kojiro and Tsubumi if he becomes a blade, Shiro throws him into the pit together with the red and black sword. Meanwhile, Kojiro and Tsuhumi follow the bushi up a mountain to fight the blue Kishin. When they were little, Musashi approached Kojiro even when everyone else hated him. Until they died of a sickness, Musashi's parents were also friends with both Kojiro and his father. When his fox-like companion called Nano appears, Shiro tells her he found out that an obsidian goddess is inside Musashi. Telling Nano to watch over the pit with Musashi inside of it, Shiro leaves. Falling for a long time, Musashi manages to stop his fall with the red and black sword. However, when he grabs it, black stones sprout from his body. Looking down, Musashi realizes that at the bottom of the pit is magma. When he tries climbing up, the obsidian goddess inside him tells him he should stay with her forever. She makes him fall into the magma, but covers his body with black stone so he isn't harmed. The goddess reminds him how, after his parents died, his cruel relatives took him in. They ordered him to draw as little attention to himself as possible, since they are ashamed of him and his late parents for showing mercy to Kojiro and his father. Because Musashi was forced to stay at home all day, he was incredibly lonely and wanted to be of use to someone. One day, a person on the street told him to throw a rock at Kojiro's father who was passing by. Musashi was reluctant to do it, but he wanted to be useful. With everyone around him pressuring him, he threw the rock in the end. When he told Kojiro's father that all bushi should die, he saw the disappointment on his face. The obsidian goddess tells him he wants to become a bushi, just because he wants to be with Kojiro and not because it's his true desire. Now that he can't fight and help his friends, the goddess tells him he should stay with her forever and hide from the world. Meanwhile, Kojiro, Tsubumi, and the other bushi reach the blue Kishin. Surprisingly, the Kishin seems to have been attacked already and its horn is nowhere to be seen. At that moment, Shiro appears, saying that he has taken the Kishin's head off, but won't say where it is. When the other bushi get angry at him, Shiro kills some of them, saying he wants to kill everyone and take their Kitetsu swords. All the bushi attack Shiro at once, but he defeats most of them quickly using the power of his black aura. Shiro recognizes Kojiro and tells him Musashi has already turned into a sword. Meanwhile, Musashi has almost completely turned into black stone, but Nano pulls him out of the pit. Outside, Musashi returns to normal, even though Nano expected him to have completely turned to stone. Musashi immediately hurries towards Kojiro and Tsugumi. When he was a child, after he hit Kojiro's father with a rock, he returned to his house and apologized, ashamed of himself. Kojiro's father accepted his apology, telling him that he is his and Kojiro's only friend. He invites him to live with Kojiro and starts teaching him the way of life of the bushi. Remembering all this, Musashi gets his fighting spirit back. Up on the mountain, Shiro continues slaughtering bushi, but is disappointed because their souls are weak. Seeing Kojiro's courageous soul, he decides to take him on. Kojiro launches blue projectiles from his sword, but he can't hit Shiro at all, who quickly defeats him. Just in time to save Kojiro, Musashi appears and attracts Shiro's attention. Even though Musashi still can't fully use his Kitetsu sword, the black stones don't grow on him anymore when he holds it, meaning the sword doesn't reject him anymore. When Nano appears, Shiro tells her to attack Musashi so he can see what the obsidian goddess will do. Musashi and Kojiro are determined to fight Nano and Sugumi is reluctant, but joins them too. Nano turns her staff into a segmented sword with seven blades and attacks Musashi and his friends with quick attacks coming from all directions. Musashi dodges them and launches himself into the air at Nano, but gets thrown back to the ground. Seeing they can't reach Nano without destroying her swords, Kojiro thinks of a plan. 
The three of them split up and Nanao attacks Musashi. Knowing she was going to attack Musashi, Suhumi grabs one of Nanao's swords with her Kitetsu whips, enabling Musashi to destroy it. Disappointed by Nanao, Shiro joins the battle. Charging his Kitetsu sword, Shiro creates walls of light around the whole mountain peak and reverses it. While most of the bushi fall off the mountain, Musashi, Tsubumi, and Kojiro manage to hold on. Shiro tells Musashi he should become the strongest bushi with the strongest Kitetsu blade by himself instead of forming bushi bands. However, Musashi and Kojiro instinctively knows he is wrong. Stabbing his sword into the mountain, Shiro makes everyone fall off including Musashi and his friends. Before he falls to the ground, time stops for Musashi. The obsidian goddess appears in front of his eyes, saying she now understands what kind of person he is. She tells him she is the force that draws all things together, so she is holding Musashi and the others in place. She explains that Shiro is her enemy because he wants her power, and that she doesn't want Musashi to die because she is inside him. Using her power, she prepares to save Musashi's life, but Musashi refuses to be the only one saved. He tells her he is powerless by himself, and that he needs his friends to survive. The goddess praises him, telling him humans won't be able to defeat the Kishin if they don't work together. The obsidian goddess takes over Musashi's body and his hair grows long and turns black. Time continues flowing and everyone's swords and their blade energy get pulled towards Musashi. Possessing Musashi's body, the goddess takes away Shiro's sword, nullifies his spell, and makes everyone else land safely. When Nana attacks, the goddess in Musashi's body deflects the attack easily. She explains that people possessing the power of the Black Stone can control blade energy, so they can pull it towards them or repel it. However, the goddess power can't last long in the human world, so she asks Kojiro and Sugumi to help Musashi in the future. Before returning into Musashi's body, the goddess attracts all the Bushi's blade energy. As Musashi's hair turns white, the goddess uses everyone's energy to fire a huge beam at Shiro and Nanao, seemingly defeating them and leaving nothing behind. After the battle is over, Musashi, his friends, and the Bushi happily reunite. Nearby, a huge hole appeared where the Blue Kishin used to be. Somewhere else, Shiro and Nanao appear in the sky together with the Blue Kishin. Later, Musashi and his friends attend a funeral, held for all the Bushi who died in the battle against Shiro. The next day, Musashi tries the sword test once again with the same sword he tried it with before. He concentrates and this time his aura glows red like a ruby, meaning he finally succeeded. Everyone congratulates him, especially because a red aura is rare and powerful. Musashi tells Kojiro he saw his father during the first time when he tried the sword trial and he thinks that the obsidian goddess knows him. Since his father gave him a kitetsu mount that only Bushi usually use, Kojiro starts thinking he had connections with one of the Bushi bands. Meanwhile, it turns out Shiro and Nano no Jizai was the one who sealed the obsidian goddess inside Musashi. At sunset, Musashi and his friends prepare to continue their hunt for the kitchen. Kojiro bought a map and they decide to head east. After some time passes, Musashi and his friends get lost in a swampy forest. Suddenly, Kojiro and Tsugumi get captured by a green plant-like Oni. Drawing his sword, Musashi locates the Oni's horn and destroys it, defeating the Oni easily. Kojiro and Tsugumi free themselves, but they notice there was a third person captured, a beautiful red-haired girl. After Musashi frees her, a small old man approaches her, calling her a princess. He introduces her as Mikiru, the daughter of Lord Nobumitsu, the head of the Suruwatari Bushi Band. The two of them are headed towards the port of Harima in order to attend a battle that will decide the fate of the nation. Out of gratitude for saving Mikiru, the old man drives Musashi and his friends out of the forest on his their Kitetsu Mount. While they're riding the mount, Musashi notices Mikiru is suddenly serious and tries to brighten the atmosphere, but doesn't succeed. The old man explains that the Saruwatari Bushi Band is a part of the Uzuji Alliance, a network of friendly Bushi Bands. On a bumpy part of the road, Michiru and Musashi fall off the coach and down a cliff, but Michiru reacts fast and activates her Kitetsu Blade, creating an azure umbrella they use to float in the sky. They see a huge black mass in the east and Michiru tells Musashi that mass is the first Kishin that ever appeared in Hinamoto. They see that the Kishin is moving, destroying everything in its path. Over 150 years ago, the black Kishin appeared in the sky and was too powerful for the humans to fight him. That is why the people in Hinamoto split into two groups, the Bushi who saw the Oni as enemies and the rest of the people who thought of the Kishin as gods. The latter group built mining towns all over the land, harvesting and offering the ore to the Kishin. Eating the ore, the Black Kishin grew bigger and bigger until it covered over half of Hinamoto and it still continues growing. Outside of the forest, Musashi and his friends say farewell to Mikiru and her attendant, who invite Musashi and his friends to help them in Harima. When Kojiro takes out a scroll his father gave him, 
Sugumi notices it's the same as the scroll that all bushy bands have. She recognizes the seal of Lord Yusuji on it and realizes Kojiro's father was probably a bushy who was part of Yusubi's band. In Harima, different bushy bands gather. Hearing the obsidian goddess was spotted, Tatsuomi gets interested in her. Nana was also hiding in Harima. Through a black stone growing out of her chest, a shadowy organization called the Obsidian Eight contacts her. Their goal is ensuring the survival of the Kishin, so that they can live alongside them. Somewhere else, Musashi and his friends are traveling towards Harima, in order to find out more about the Yusuji Bushi Band and Kojiro's father. Hey, thank you for staying all the way till the end. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It takes only a second, but it means everything to us. Have a great day and see you in the next video.